So I am personally approaching somewhere in the neighborhood of half a million photos made with the 50 millimeter focal length. So my attention was immediately grabbed by the release of the Canon 50 millimeter F 1.8 RF lens. It's distinctly different, not only in size. I mean, this is insane. The difference in size is just obvious and insane, and the weight is crazy. This, the 50 millimeter f1.8 is a featherweight lens if I've ever owned one. But the difference in price as well, this is a $2,000 uh, more expensive lens than this one. The 50 millimeter f1.8 is only $199. It's literally the same price as the uh, EF to RF mount adapter ring which is pretty crazy uh, considering there is a control ring built into this thing. I'm surprised they were able to hit the $200 price point for this. And just to show you what it looks like attached to the camera, it's incredibly small. It's so lightweight and shallow. I have a scale, I could show you what the weight actually literally is, but I'm trying to find something that is comparable in weight that you could just have as an everyday product around your house. I would say it weighs maybe close to the same as three or four batteries. It's just a little bit heavier maybe than this, uh, the MacBook charging brick. Um, it's incredibly lightweight. I mean, you would forget it's attached to your camera. That's compared to the 50 millimeter F 1.2, which does give you a lot more light to work in, but at a cost, <laughs> financially and weight wise. This thing has always been a little heavier than I uh, would otherwise have preferred. And I was coming from shooting 10 years of Nikon where my favorite lens in, that, in the Nikon lineup was the 58 millimeter F 1.4 G, which was also kind of a featherweight lens. It was incredibly lightweight. So I've always been a little bit annoyed by how big and heavy the 51 II is. So other than the price, that's immediately what grabbed my attention about this lens. As soon as I unboxed it and attached it to my camera, the first thing I tried to do was adjust the, uh, the control ring. Cause I don't know about you, but I actually really like the clickiness the little clicks that you can get uh, from the control ring. And I was expecting the experience to be like every other Canon control ring that I've used. They all have this clickiness. You can actually, if you're a videographer, send it off to Canon and have the clickiness removed so that it's fully smooth, but they all have that. And I was disappointed actually, uh, right out of the box to feel and, and realize that the 50 millimeter does not have that really nice, pleasing clickiness. It's totally smooth. They remove the clicks. So clearly they're targeting uh, perhaps, maybe it's a little bit cheaper to not have the clicks. I can't imagine that. Uh, I think maybe they're just targeting videographers more. I don't know the reason, but I am crossing my fingers that that's not gonna become the default state that they ship all their future RF lenses with. I like the clicks because uh, when you start shooting, you know, 15, 20 minutes into a session, uh, much less a couple hours if you're a wedding photographer like me, you start to develop a, a sixth sense about how many clicks your exposure is bumping up or down without even having to look at your screen. Um, and that's really nice to just have that intuitive, uh, you know, one, two, three click up gets you one full stop of brightness, uh, more or less. You do have the electronic viewfinder of mirrorless cameras to just see what your exposure is, but I really miss that clickiness. Maybe it's just my ADD side as well, having that uh, to fidget with, who knows. But what else is kind of interesting and unique about this lens, the little notch button that's on this, I don't know the official name for whatever this is called, but it uh, serves a dual purpose as a control ring feature, which is mapped to you know whatever you have. On my camera body, I have control rings mapped to ISO, or you have it switched to focus. And the same control ring now uh, provides manual focus for the lens. And I'm, I'm honestly a little bit disappointed that they didn't design this lens more in the spirit of what they did with their 35 f1.8 macro, which I also am a big fan of. Now this is a lot more expensive. It's more than twice the cost at $500 uh, or somewhere about there. Uh, but it also has built-in lens stabilization and it has a dedicated autofocus, manual focus, um, switch, it has a dedicated focus ring and a dedicated control ring. So for me, I am, that is well worth paying for if they had only, uh, you know, built that into this lens. And I can't imagine them re-releasing another version of this. Um, maybe they will. I think they would be smart to do that somewhere in the $500 range. It's just at the end of the day, if you've already got the 35, 
it's annoying to have to adjust your, your muscle memory and kind of your mental model of how each lens works. It doesn't have feature parity from one to the next, and that's kind of annoying. They're basically targeting the same kind of photographer. I mean, of course, it's great to have really affordable lenses. And at the end of the day, I think everybody should own this 50 millimeter f1.8. It's the absolute cheapest way to have, if nothing else, a last ditch backup lens somewhere in your bag or in the trunk of your car in case you're ever out at a shoot and your you know, professional glass or maybe your more expensive glass is broken, or it's a fantastic, everybody should own this as an entry level uh, way to start shooting really beautiful photos. Let me zoom in on some pictures I took of Nessa the other day. We had a crazy cloudy morning and uh, I think I shot almost all of these photos wide open at f1.8. Yeah, this lens is crazy sharp. There are almost no issues. I do see a little bit of purple fringing around kind of the high contrast areas, especially, you know, I had her wear this black hat because it would be really contrasted against the uh, white sort of fog that we had that morning, but it's really, really, <laughs> Beautiful, it's not that bad at all. And you can see here what my settings were. This is at f1.8, so 320. Um, yeah, it just renders the bokeh really uh, delightfully. Um, and just as a side note, any image that I quickly fly through or, or skip across, if I don't stop on every single one, was made with the 50 millimeter uh, 1.8 RF. I don't have any other uh, lenses mixed into my Lightroom catalog that I'm displaying here. This image that I showed on Instagram stories, I ran a poll and I asked like, what is your preference? The 1.2 version or the 1.8 version? I think it's really nice to see, you know, the limits of what lenses can do for you. Uh, so, you know, obviously I could have shot the 1.2 lens at 1.8 and showed a back-to-back -back comparison that way, but I'm more interested in how these, these kinds of tools uh, perform at their maximum capability. And a a lot of people, I would say, I think it was the majority by a notable margin actually said they prefer the 1.8 lens. I'll just show you the AB. So it was these two back to back. This is with the uh, 1.8 RF. This is with the 1.2. And uh, I can see a clear difference in uh, the, the smoothness of the bokeh. The background is a little less distracting because it is a lot more shallow in its render and all of that. But a lot of people, I think, preferred the slightly more contextual awareness that you get having a 1.8 aperture. Again, even with this really high contrasted background, really comparable in terms of performance. This certainly has cleaner chromatic aberration and purple fringing, but uh, let me see, I might've cleaned it up in editing. Let me reset to zero. You can see when everything's zeroed out, it's really not so bad with the purple fringing. However, as you start to push and pull the files and really manipulate everything in post-processing, purple fringing tends to come out a little bit more and be a bit more of a problem as you add contrast and other things that you'd probably add in your normal editing workflow. Uh, but that is easily solved. You can actually create a one-click preset or just jump down here to uh, lens corrections whenever you want and hit purple defrag and it's gone. It's really not that problematic. The biggest setback, the biggest consideration uh, with a lens like this, being at 1.8 on a mirrorless system, you're gonna be a little bit more limited in your focus accuracy in low light situations. Um, let me just page through a few more sample images just to show you, uh, this is what the flare looks like. Obviously this lens isn't gonna have uh, as many advanced coatings as the more expensive lenses, so it's more susceptible to flare, but it actually holds up pretty well. Not all of these photos are totally edited, by the way. Um, it does okay, it retains contrast really well in, in backlight, and yeah, the flare kind of has a nice quality to it. I like this sort of uh, crazy straight line thing that's really kind of unique to this lens. I haven't seen that, I don't believe, in any other lens that I've uh, worked with. And here it is uh, directly against the sunlight. It retains contrast really, really well, uh, you know, with uh, Nessa here in the foreground. The purple fringing kind of turns into haze here in the backlight. You can see that purple a lot more pronounced there, which I actually also kind of like, <laughs> but that's something, uh, you know, you'd have to edit out, you know, based on whatever your personal tastes are. This is some sample of sort of foreground bokeh shooting through, um, you know, some leaf or whatever that I picked up off the, uh, the ivy wall there. Looks beautiful. Foreground bokeh is very smooth. Background bokeh is very smooth. Here's some low light shooting and candlelight. This is where the biggest trade-off with a lens like this exists. Um, with mirrorless cameras, it needs light coming through the glass to assist in focusing as much as possible. The vast majority of flashes uh, that, that are out on the market right now don't have infrared focus assist beams that work alongside uh, the camera. It's all 
however much light it can get through the glass. You'll actually notice, especially if you're shooting with a flash, um, it'll artificially boost your ISO in low light and artificially open up the aperture to hit the sensor with as much light as possible just to acquire autofocus. And then it'll stop back down to whatever your settings are if they're different and take the photo at the exposure that you intended to. But I found that this lens did okay shooting in low light. It wasn't it wasn't that bad. Candlelight is about as dark as you're probably gonna be in most any scenario, and it held up okay. You can see this is actually my favorite photo, and it missed focus. It actually missed focus and, and focused on her forehead and not her, her actual kind of lips and nose the way that I probably would have preferred it. Now, I did get an air code. When I first attached this lens to my camera body, I got Attached lens may not work properly because it's not supported by the camera firmware. So make sure whatever body you're using this on is updated to the latest firmware. Yes, this lens is missing image stabilization, which kind of sucks. But if you have a newer camera like the R6 or the R5, that has sensor-based image stabilization built into it. So it's not that big of a trade-off. And yeah, at the end of the day, it's great to see that Canon is diversifying kind of top-down in their approach to what they're releasing. I think it's proven that Canon's had the better strategy in terms of uh, rolling out their mirrorless camera system with having it kind of a top-down professional release for a bunch of critical lenses and now diversifying more with their 1.8 series sort of silver ring series lenses. Very happy with this. I so desperately wish I could get the clicky wheel and the, the actual knob and button was a little bit different in its implementation, but for $200, it is a tough deal to beat. Everybody that shoots Canon RF should own this lens, even if you don't use 50 millimeter that often. I will mention one, one slight annoyance, it's not the end of the world, but the front element of the lens does uh, retract and extend as you adjust focus, and it is kind of loud. I'm not sure how well the mic's gonna pick it up. It was just noticeably loud compared to my other 50 millimeter lens. Uh, that's just a slight annoyance. I would say it's very comparable to the 35 millimeter F1.8 if you happen to own this lens. But yeah, they both have this front element kind of uh, detract and retract uh, depending on where you are in the focus range. I'm excited to see what other lenses in this range that Canon releases. And yeah, thank you so much for your attention. Um, I'll also share a bunch of these raw files in my Patreon post, the Patreon article that I have that goes along with any video that I make. Uh, I'll share the high-res raw files there so you can actually play around with them in Lightroom yourself the way a proper photographer should. So thank you as always for your attention. Have a good day. Bye.